you are a five-time Olympic gold medalist with 16 world championship medals, first black woman to medal in an individual swimming event, but you're also an advocate, you're an entrepreneur, and you just released a documentary on a platform that you co-founded. So we have a lot to talk about, and I just really appreciate you taking the time out to do it today. Oh, thank you. So first, I want to talk about together, your co-founders are fellow legends like yourself and Alex Morgan, Chloe Kim, and Sue Bird. How did you all come together? Because I feel like I couldn't find that anywhere online. Yeah, so Alex Morgan had this amazing idea to start this uh, company, and um, she wanted to bring other women on board who she felt voices could be very beneficial to the company. And it really was about giving women a bigger platform. Um, the media doesn't cover us as much as they do our male counterparts. And so we wanted to have a place where young women and girls can see, see it be at moments all the time and to feel like their voices are heard. And so it really was um, the brainchild of Alex, but so grateful and lucky to be able to be a part of it. Well, you guys are all just like goats in your own rights. And I'm so curious about what a working relationship would be like. Like, what's a day in the work world of all of you guys together? Um, We have an awesome team that does more of the day-to-day -day work. So um, we get to kind of bring our ideas to the table. But we definitely have an amazing team up at Together that's kind of doing all the nitty gritty that makes sense. Makes mm -hmm. total sense. Um, <laughs> so on the platform you founded, like I discussed, you released Head Above Water last month and you're an admittedly private person. And the project mentions not just getting things off your chest, but getting everything off of your shoulders. And I want to know what motivated you to do that now and in this way. Yeah, so I definitely had uh, a lot of support when putting this out, um, my family and friends, as you mentioned, I am a pretty private person. And I think that sometimes it's really hard to be vulnerable when your story can sometimes be discredited or dismissed. And so I was really afraid of that when putting this out. Um, but just to have the encouragement and support of my family and friends, um, my team at Wasserman and obviously together helped me do that. But I felt like it was just important to talk about my experience heading into the Tokyo Olympic Games. It was an unusual experience dealing with being overtrained. And then what occurred after that? A lot of people um, were wondering, what was I doing? What was going on? Because um, in a sense, I went back to my private life and kind of just took care of myself mentally, physically, and emotionally, which was extremely important for me. But I also think it was important to share with some of my fans, people who have supported me and cared about me, share with them um, my experience and kind of give them a background of um, what I had been through, but also where I would like to go moving forward. Absolutely. And you talked about that experience, which I think is rare in a way, because I was the collegiate athlete. When we talk about overtraining syndrome, I realize now that we did not have a grasp of how serious it really, like, we don't really talk about overtraining syndrome. Maybe you hear an athlete say like, oh, we're overtraining. Like, that is not what it really is. And so I wonder, what did you know about overtraining syndrome before your diagnosis? I actually had never heard of it before my diagnosis. Um, the first time I heard it was when the doctor said it and it came out of his mouth and, um, it is rare, but I think the beautiful thing about sharing my story is I actually have had several people uh, DM me and message me and contact me and tell me that they feel like they had overtraining syndrome or that they currently are dealing with it. So um, it is more common. I think it's just people don't really know what they're experiencing at the time. Yeah, that's a perfect segue because that was going to be my next question. Like, what has been the impact? I'm sure people are realizing now, probably looking back, that they had been overtrained. And what has it meant to you to get that positive response after, you know, taking a leap and being vulnerable? It's meant a lot to get that positive response. I think that um, it made me feel like I wasn't alone because during the process, obviously, I had support of my family and friends, but. Um, it's a lonely place when no one actually really understands what you're going through mentally and physically. 
And so to have people tell me that they had dealt with it, um, I have a lot of empathy for them. Um, and also for people who have told me that they're currently dealing with it. I've been able to share some of my tips, um, what I've learned, um, just offer them support. Um, I've had people ask me, what were your symptoms? And then be like, oh my gosh, I had that. And so just to have like a little sense of community um, with a diagnosis that sometimes can feel like a very lonely um, place, I think is really a special part of like sharing my story. Yeah, I think, so the symptoms that I was able to read about were like muscle fatigue, shortness of breath, elevated heart rate, but then you also talk about like depression, anxiety, and insomnia, and it seems like those two go hand in hand. I mean, I can imagine you're a competitive person, you're hopping in the pool to win, now you can't, and you have to deal with that mentally. How have you found support since dealing with all that? Yeah, so I mean, I've mentioned it a lot, but obviously leaning on my family and friends, um, they're such huge supporters of me. You know, speaking to my sports psychologist, I've been working with uh, Ritual, which is an affirmation, um, which is an app, a self-care app. And I have affirmation um, series with them just to kind of ground myself in things that matter to me, what's important to me, who I am and who my truth is. Um, I think that really elevates um, me mentally because obviously swimming is something I do, but it's not who I am. And um, even through those trials and tribulations, it's really nice to kind of take a step back from what you're dealing with and just take care of yourself as a person. Yeah, I mean, I love hearing you mention your family. You see your mom in the documentary, and I think you have two brothers and you're recently engaged. So when you say family, like there are people that you can be spending time with, and I'm curious how it's been. What's been the most surprising aspect of that extra time? What's been the most fun aspect of that time? Yeah, so I actually took mm, six or kind of six months out of the pool. I wasn't training and um, I was able to spend so much time with my family and friends um, being in Texas or being in California where I was living at the time. And that was really special because as an athlete, you make a lot of sacrifices and some of that is not having as much time with your family. So it was really nice to be able to you know, go to birthday parties and go to events that I usually would have to pass up on for practice. And, you know, the goal is to still reach these high goals I have for myself, but also to take a little bit of time to be able to spend time with my family, even if it's at the end of the season, have a vacation and spend time with them is something that's really valuable. And I think will reset me towards the goals that I want to reach. Yeah. Um. You talk about a birthday party in the documentary. Your mom mentions that after coming back from, I think it was 2021 Olympics, you were close to your 25th birthday. And so around that time, she- I flew home on my 25th birthday. You flew home on your birthday. Oh, yes. <laughs> so that's, okay. So you flew home on your 24th birthday, you, or 25th, you get back and your mom does, she tries to take away all of like the things that would remind you of that experience. And I'm curious now you're removed from it you've probably had another birthday how what's like what's the difference and are you able to look at those things in a different perspective like fill me in on that yeah so for my 26th birthday I was getting ready to move from California to Arizona so my birthday is August 2nd and I was packing up to move here um August 15th so I was really excited about the new experience that I was having it was just a kind of a whole 180 of what I experienced coming back from Tokyo and obviously the tough experience there. And so I'm just in a different place. I feel like I've learned a lot about myself um, physically, but mentally and emotionally taking that time away from the pool and how I would like to kind of um, catapult myself into the goals that I have for myself. You talk about learning a lot about yourself. What stands out the most of all the things you've learned? Well, I, I like to think I'm a pretty strong person. Um, I I work hard for the goals that I want to reach. I make a lot of sacrifices. And sometimes um, I push myself harder than I need to. And so for me, I've learned that that strength is really great. But more than anything, it's important to rest and take care of yourself. Um, anybody who knows me, I'm such a go-getter. I just go, 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 go. But learning to you know rest and recover... Um, mentally and emotionally 
um, and give yourself grace. I think that's been something that I've had to do throughout this process is not be too hard on myself and not put too much pressure on myself. And I think that's making things um, a lot more fun. And uh, it's really hard to have patience, but I, I've just learned that those are important things that I need to have a staple in my life. Yeah, I mean, you talk about having fun, and I know you mentioned that you just want to swim now with no pressure and no expectations from yourself or anyone. Now, like you've mentioned, you moved to Arizona to train with Bob Bowman and that pro group. Are you seeing that come to fruition, like the lack of pressure and all that? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, when you have high goals, it's really hard not to put pressure on yourself. But um, I, I feel like I have done better and I'm continuing to give myself grace and understand the place that I am in training right now to take um, seven months away from the pool and then try to get back up to a highly competitive level is going to take some time. And so I've been able to just take things as they come, take it day by day and not think too far ahead of um you know, where I am in the moment. But there also are some times where I do get, get caught up in my performance in practice and um, I start to put that pressure on myself again. So I'm better, I'm getting better at having that awareness. And I think that's really important for me. Um, and working with Bob, I think he's someone that's really kind of taking pressure off of me. So I'm surrounded by a great group of people at ASU. I love that. That is, I mean, that's to be expected. Yeah. Be like, oh, I'm just, I'm fine. There's no pressure on me. I mean, I'm having so, fun. <laughs> which is important. Yes. Fun is important. And I think that kind of goes into like your identity as an athlete. And you talk about how the people that helped you define that were like Venus and Serena Williams mainly because they kind of redefined what it's like to be a tennis player and for you like you were able to kind of transition that in, in a similar way and I know that you met Serena I think it was like in 2016 and I feel like I see so many parallels between the two of you like you're both trailblazers in your own right she dealt with health issues um I think from pregnancy but then still laid it all out on the court soon after like it she didn't really take a whole bunch of time but her doing that it raised awareness and all of this. And so I just wonder if you've had any communication with her or like, have you been observing from distance? She's retired now. So like, I just wonder if there are any updates on in that area. Uh, we're not that close. I wish we were. Um, her and her sister are obviously two people that I'll continue to look up to, you know, for as long as they live. But um yeah, no, no communication there, but <laughs> maybe in the future. <laughs> so, so the 2016 encounter was the sole encounter. Like that's like a lifetime moment oh, now. So then I met her in 2016, um, Serena. I actually met Venus. I think a couple months after at the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. um, and Serena, Venus and Serena at the U.S. Open. So I got to go there kind of after the post Olympic tour in 2016 and that was pretty awesome to meet the both of them and then I worked with Serena for the Nike athlete think tank that we have and mm -hmm. um I was able to see her up at the Nike campus in 2020 maybe or 2019 okay that's pretty cool yeah so pretty cool <laughs> two encounters three <laughs> two or three yeah <laughs> So, okay, do you, like, feel yourself fanning out a little bit? Like, is there anyone that you, because you are obviously huge star. So then are you, like, fanning out when you're seeing Venus or Serena? Like, oh, my gosh, it's Venus or Serena. Or no? Um, I did. I did with them, obviously, because they were, you know, they're one of my, two of my biggest role models. Um, when I've met some other famous people, I haven't fanned out too much. Um, yeah, so... I'm pretty chill because I guess I, I shouldn't say I get uncomfortable when people fan out with me, but um, I'm just a person. Like, obviously, I feel like I've accomplished amazing things and um, people say that I've inspired them, but I just want people to be able to feel like they can approach me. And so I think I kind of take what I would like people to feel like they could just approach me. I, I take that into how I would probably approach someone else. So I try to be chill. <laughs> are you in love with the sport again that's what the documentary mentions that's the thing that you want to 
work on just falling back in love with the sport are you there yet yeah I mean I have enjoyed getting up and going to practice and challenging myself I think anytime when you want to be great at a sport there's times when you you know you struggle a little bit um especially with me because I always focus on my performance and swimming is so time-based but I have had so much fun with the group at ASU and um, just challenging myself. It's a totally different thing. I get to start off on a clean slate, um, even though other people might not feel that way because they know my best times and stuff, but I've just been having a lot of fun. I really love what I'm doing and um, how I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, One aspect of the documentary that really stuck out to me was the inclusion of an excerpt from like a a news broadcast where someone said that you felt like at one point you were swimming with the weight of the Black community on your shoulders, which I think is a really powerful quote, but I'm wondering how you feel about that now, since that was probably in 2016. Yeah, I I don't feel like it's not still there. I think that my existence in the sport kind of provides a place where that weight is laid on me. I think for me, it's really about trying to not put, as I mentioned, that pressure on myself to feel like I need to be all things to all people, that I need to be the sole contributor to why inclusion and equality is important in the sport of swimming. Um, And obviously those are my ultimate goals beyond just, um, are my ultimate goals outside of the pool, but it's really about for me um, just swimming for myself. I I think that at times I kind of swam for other people to inspire other people to get more people in the sport of swimming. And um, I think it's more important right now for me to swim for Simone and everything else will take care of itself. Um, And uh, it's kind of like a catch 22. I'm not saying that I'm, you know, removing myself from things like that, but it it's better for my mental and physical health to just focus on Simone. Absolutely. And you talk about Simone and who you are, and we're like nearing the end of our time. So I'm going to do some rapid fire questions. We're just going to get to know you super fast. And the first one is going to be your favorite all time career moment. When you look back over your career, best moment. Uh, I guess I have to say Rio gold. Like (laughs) I thought I was going to win a medal. I didn't think it was going to be gold. So just to turn around and see gold is obviously like, you know, that's what people know me the most for. So I also feel like I kind of have to answer it that way. That, that's fair. Okay. So the documentary, we, we, it give, gives a, a little glimpse into what you'll be doing in that free time that you had. Your website says that you're an avid cook. So I'm imagining that you spent some of your free time doing that. What was the main thing that you cooked during that span? Uh, I'm actually going to be honest. I didn't cook too much during that time because um, I spent most of it in Houston and my mom is an amazing cook. So I just kind of sat on the couch and let her do that. But I did make some mussels one time and that was like one of the first times or one of the, I'd say the second time I made it and that was really good. Love that. Okay, favorite current athlete other than yourself, not retired, currently playing and not you. Any sport? Any sport. Mm, I'm going to have to go with LeBron. Okay. (laughs) Love that. Yeah. We love love LeBron love. Yes. Um, Okay. Comfort movie or show? And we just have one more. I I have a lot of reality TV show. Okay. Trash TV, I like to call it. But, um, you know, it's comic relief. So... Probably any reality TV show I'm probably. You have to name one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people are really going to judge me now. Um, We'll go with The Bachelor. The Bachelor. Bachelor, Bachelor okay. is like a national guilty pleasure. Everybody watches The Bachelor, so you're okay. not one in that. Okay, finally, last one. One thing that people do not know. No one will know this. We can't find it anywhere. One thing that you feel comfortable sharing that nobody knows about you. Hmm. I don't know if I can think of one of those. I thought it was like a tick, 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 because it's rapid fire. I know, but I don't have one. (laughs) There's not like a hidden talent. There's not like a... No. You don't have any hidden talents? No hidden talents, no. You can't juggle or anything? No. (laughs) Okay, well, that's okay. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, it'll probably come to me right after we get off of this. It's all good. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time. If there's, if there's anything else you want to add about Revelation since the documentary, I'm all ears. You can share them with me here now. Um, I think we kind of touched on it. I think for me, it really was about, you know, granting myself grace and rest. Um, and then I think kind of deeper than that is, uh, which I kind of hate to admit, is that, you know, maybe it is worth it to be a little more vulnerable with people, um, to not worry too much about can, the negative comments, like focus on the people who you, whose lives you actually might be touching and making their life a little better. Um, Cause I think that has been something that has eased kind of the anxiety about putting out this documentary is the positive feedback of people feeling like they're seen and heard. And um, I think that that's really special. You really can't ask for better than that. Absolutely. One more thing before you go, you talk about the positivity and just taking that in, but the negativity is real. Like you said once, or somebody said this before you probably, but when you're the person to break through the glass ceiling, you're the one with the most cuts and bruises. And I wonder how you are reckoning with that now. How do you, how would you tell someone in your shoes who's trailblazing to deal with those bruises and cuts? Cause I feel like that's gotta be. Ooh, I, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for me like I said it really comes from my support system um they speak life into me every single day um they're there to listen to me um when I'm crying and having a tough time um but also to focus more on the task and mission that you want to accomplish anybody who's ever accomplished anything most likely has had to deal with a hardship and um in my case sometimes a lot of it is is negative commentary, but I think that it's just kind of another roadblock that you have to step over or break through. And, um, you know, it, it's only going to make the journey worth it. Um, but also don't ignore your feelings. Um, you're human. It, it's really important to validate what you're feeling. Um, so there's, there's several things, but I think the number one thing is anything worth achieving is gonna have hardships and roadblocks along the way. So it's just one of those things you have to factor into the equation and keep pushing towards your goals. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.